I want to welcome you to the chapter that deals with liabilities, long-term liabilities, which our main focus will be on bonds. And there are two types of bonds that we may have. We have well, three types, actually. We have them sold at par value, we can sell them at discounts, or we can sell them at premiums. Now, if they're sold at par value, you just record them cash and face value is the same, so there's no big deal for that. This one will be sold at a discount. The reason why you can tell that, the market rate's 12%, the stated rate's 10%. Anytime you have this situation where the market's greater than the stated rate, it will be sold at a discount. And then we have $100,000 worth of bonds. I gave you the interest paid as $5,000, but the way you calculate that is right here, is B1, which is $10,000 times 10% divided by 2. Which the stated rate is only used to calculate the interest. To find the market value of the bond, you can use the market rate. Okay, so we start with the finding the market value of the bond. So we have 100,000 times point, uh, let's see. So what we do is we'll go to the present value table of one time payment. We look at 6% at 10 payments. And you find that's 0.558395. Okay, so we equal 100,000 times 0.558395 and that comes up to 58350 I'm paying. I want to be safe here and I'm just going to use the round function so there's no question that I have it incorrect. Whoops. Um, it's about round. There we go. Okay. Then we have for this, the 100,000 times the 10% divided by 2, and that's going to equal the 5,000 times. Now, we go to the present value of an annuity. We use 6% at 10 payments, and that's going to be the 7.360087. And over here, then, we'll take, we can just do the whole thing, equal... 100,000 times 10% divided by 2 times 7.360087. Okay, it's bounded for two decimals, but again, I wanted to make sure that it doesn't mess things up later by putting the round function in here. I know it's, it looks like it's the same, but it may not be. Okay, we add those two up, and that gives you 92,639.94. That is our value we have here. So that's what will go there. Now, so we're at a discount, so equal. The amount of the discount is equal to 100,000 minus the value of the bond. So that is our discount. Okay, interest paid each time, if you want to calculate it, is equal to 100,000 at 4 times. 10% absolute value divided by 2. I'm not going to do a rounding on that because that's nice and neat. And that's 5,000 every time. Okay. Interest expense, I will do a round function on. Uh, that is the carrying value times the market rate divided by 2. And that's two decimals. 58, 55, 8, 40. Discount to be amortized is the difference between the two. Or 558.40. The unamortized discount is the 73.60 minus the 558.40. And the carrying value then is the 92,000 plus the 50. 558.40. You can also take the 100,000 minus the 680166. Okay, now if we did this correctly, let's make sure I got all my, nope, I didn't. That should be an absolute value for the B3. Because otherwise it's going to mess everything up. We carry this down. And we're off 5 cents. And that's a rounding thing. So what we'll do is we, we simply cover this, um, we put in this is equal, sorry, we'll just say, because it's the rounding thing, that's going to be that one. 
and this one is equal to this cell plus E19. Okay, because that gets it to come out right. It's a, it's a rounding thing, so that's okay. Okay, journal entries we have. First one is the initial recording of it. Now remember, we're selling the bonds, so we received the cash, and we received 92000 639.94. The discount is the 73.6806, and the bonds is for the hundred thousand. Okay. First entry: interest expense is for the 55.58.40. Uh, discount is the 558.40. Cash is the 5,000. Then we go to the next one, 559190, 59190, 5000. Okay, that's the first two. And then you just keep repeating this down. This is your, this is the interest expense you record. This is the discount on bonds payable. And then this is the cash. Okay. Next one we have is to calculate the premium amount. Again, same type of entries, but the exception is the market rate is now 10%, the standard 8%, the market rate is still 10. So we didn't change the market rate any. What I did is change the uh, stated rate, sorry. We didn't change the stated rate. That's that 10%. What I changed was the market rate to 8. And because the market's less than the stated, it will now be at a premium. Okay, so we have the 100,000 times. Now we're going to use 4% at 10 pay periods. And that one is 0.675564. It's a higher number because it is not um, discounted as heavily. So we do the 100,000 times. 0.675564. So that gives us 6755640. Then we do the same thing here. I can just use the 5000 because it's the same interest payment. I'll show you later how to get that. Times. Okay, we use 4% 10 pay periods. This time it's an annuity. Um, so that's 8.110896. Okay, so we have equal, and I calculated it here, times 8.110896, and that's 48. But to be safe again, let's use the round function just to be safe. Okay, and then we just simply add those up, and that gives us 108, 110, 88. Okay, again, this is the discount. The face value is 10, 100,000. This is 108. Okay, so the carrying value is your purchase initial purchase price. The premium again is the difference. Um, okay, interest expense is done the same way. The 100,000 times 10% divided by 2, or $5,000. Okay, and let's get this so we can copy it. So we absolute value the two, the 100,000, the 10%, and then we can copy that down. The interest expense equal round. Okay, the carrying value, just like we did before, times the market rate, absolute value of that, divided by 2, and we want two decimals. Okay, so let's, let's get this so that it's, there we go. Okay, and the premium to be amortized again is the difference between the two. Get it, try to you always get it so that it's a positive number. Uh, like I said, you can do it that way. I did it by taking the larger from the smaller by the smaller, or you can do the absolute value signs, and that way you're consistent with it. You don't have to worry about which one's first. 
Um, and this time it's going to be subtracted, however. Okay. Now this one here, you can take the 100,000 minus the unamortized discount. On this one, you take the 100,000 plus the unamortized premium. You should get the same results. And again, if we copy this down, we should come up with, okay, we're off four cents. And that's because of rounding. So this should be 961.50. So we want that to equal this one. And then this one. And because it's a premium, it will be subtracted. So you have the 5,000 minus E51. 961.50. So that's, okay, that's just because of rounding. It's going to be off. Now the entries are basically the same. We have cash. This time it's 108, 110. Fit 88. So the premium is a credit of 8110. That's an adjunct account. The discount is a um, contra account. Sorry, I don't think what it was. Okay. And then this entry is the same thing. We do the same thing. Interest expense. Now you notice interest expense is lower than what we have because premiums reduces the amount we record as interest expense. Okay, so it's 43, 24, 44, and it's 675, 56, and 500,000. And then for the second one is 42, 97, 41. Premium is 702, 59, and the cash amount is 5,000. And that is how you record the bonds for using the discount and the premium. Now this is from the seller's point of view. Last week we did the other ones we did for the buyer's point of view. So I hope that gives you a little bit of difference. And um, I guess I will see you on the next one. Or talk to you in the next one. I guess.